Rosetta looked carefully into the distance. She had a long journey ahead of her. All that was left was to say goodbye to her friends and she could set off. Ro, have you waited long for me? shouted a blonde-haired boy to the girl. Well, the son of the famous Admiral Cookie finally showed up. And you're rather late, exclaimed Rosetta. I know I came in late, so I brought a bottle of rum with me. I hope you'll forgive me this time, the boy said with a smile. Rosetta thrashing around on the burning deck. Helmsman, bloody idiot, did he really fall asleep? How did they even get wind we'd be here? Our whole trip was kept top secret. Some bastard probably ratted us out. In an irritated voice, the girl shouted. Rosetta began to guess that her assistant Nick was behind all of this. He was the only one who knew about this case. I really hope that's not the case. I always thought Nick was willing to follow me into fire and water. The girl thought wistfully. The ship staggered and Rosetta fell on the wooden crates. The girl felt a severe pain in her lower back. Rosetta was approached by her assistant, Nick. Nick, what are you doing here? I thought you stayed on the ground. The girl muttered in surprise. It doesn't matter now because you're going to die anyway. You see, I made a pact. They promised they'd give me the rest of the Toulon crew if I got rid of you, replied Nick. You realize for me as a pirate that offer was too tempting. You see, Rosetta, your ideals have brought the wrath of the other captains upon you and your crew. You should die for the sake of your own crew members. Nick forcibly poured the fast-acting poison into Rosetta's mouth. Rosetta wasn't afraid of death. She was more worried about her naive, foolish mate. Would he be able to survive without her? Mistress, you are awake after all. Your lordship, the young mistress has regained consciousness. A maid shouted and ran out of the room. Rosetta ran her hand over the silk sheets. The girl decided to herself that for some reason she had fallen into the hands of rich people. If that was the case, she was in big trouble. Oh crap, this is just what I needed. By the way, why is my body so heavy? Mumbled the girl, lifting herself up on the bed. Terrible, what's wrong with my voice? It's completely different. Surprised, Rosetta heard herself. The girl decided that her voice had changed because she had inhaled smoke during the fire. A woman in a beautiful, expensive dress burst into the room. My goodness, how you have suffered, my dear. What happiness that you have come to your senses, shouted the woman and grabbed Rosetta's hands. Now who is this anyway? You can tell she's very rich. She has earrings in her ears that easily exceed five carats. That elegant lace is made by a first-class craftsman. And that necklace, worth as much as a whole ship. Rosetta thought to herself. Thank you very much, madam. You have saved my life. How can I repay you for your kindness? Rosetta dropped to her knees and bowed to the woman. She had a plan. She was to befriend this woman. Pay you back? What are you talking about? The woman was surprised. Wait, you mean you won't charge me any fee? My goodness, how can you be so kind and generous? Rosetta exclaimed. Suddenly, Rosetta's gaze fell on a nearby mirror. In the reflection, she saw a long-haired girl. What the hell? Who is that girl? screamed Rosetta, jabbing her finger at the mirror. Leah, what's going on? Are you embarrassed by the mirror? The woman asked in a surprised voice. Ah, forgive me, I'm not feeling well today, mumbled Rosetta. The girl realized that she was trapped in someone else's body. Her name was now Leah. So this is the 415th year, not the 411th, clarified Rosetta to the maid. It's been three months since you passed out, replied the maid. If I am now in the body of a lady of House Valdemore, then I should be getting used to my new name, Leah Renuk Valdemore. What do I know about this family? Practically nothing. The only thing I know is that the Duke has two daughters. The girl thought to herself. Also, if memory serves me correctly, Leah is the crown prince's lover. To think such a girl was put in a coma for a few months. I'll bet my head that when she passed out, there was quite an uproar around the country. The girl felt her throat go dry. She took the bowl the maid had brought and drank the water in a gulp. Mistress, what are you doing? This is washing water, the maid exclaimed. The butler entered the room and announced that the duke wanted to have dinner with his daughter. Oh, shit. I haven't even had time to deal with what's going on here, have I? Surely the duke won't have any trouble figuring me out. The girl thought to herself. It's hard to believe that in an instant I found myself in another person's body. Still, there's no denying the situation. The first thing I need to do is get some information, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do next.
The girl got out of bed and walked to the window. Rosetta opened the window and breathed in the fresh air. Suddenly, the maid squealed loudly. Mistress, don't do that. Are you really trying to commit suicide again? In that case, you'll have to kill me first. You know, that won't bring the crown prince back to you. Understand that at last. The maid clung tightly to Rosetta's legs. What? That crazy girl decided to kill herself over some guy? The girl thought in surprise. While the maid brushed Rosetta's hair, she scrutinized herself in the mirror. She was good-looking, after all. In addition, she was with the duke's daughter, which made her an enviable bride. Why kill herself for some man, then? Rosetta decided to analyze the information she had gathered. From the maid's words, she realized that when the prince decided to break up with Leah, she followed him and drank a whole bottle of poison in front of him. The only thing that connects me to her is the fact that she died and exchanged bodies. But why did it all happen like that? Is it all real? The girl thought to herself. Wait, what happened to my body? If the soul is here, where is the body? And why did I wake up here only four years after my death? I need to go to the Sea Witch Calypso. Surely she knows the answer. I need to think of a way for me to see her. Mistress, you look extremely pensive. Please do not worry. You must be worried that his lordship will be very angry? The maid asked. The girl hurriedly reassured her that everything was fine. She was just thinking about her own. I need to keep my cool so that no one realizes that there is another soul in this body right now. If I'm figured out, I'll be hanged or burned at the stake. So I need to act like a noble lady. The girl decided for herself. Rosetta was thoroughly enjoying her dinner. She couldn't believe that nobles ate like this every day. The table was literally bursting with meat and expensive wines. Looking at the astonished Duke and Duchess, the girl realized that she was acting like a real pirate. She should behave with more restraint. Looks like the food has come to your liking. Sighing heavily, the Duke remarked. Yes, the meat turned out very tender. It looks like they finished off a very young calf, replied the girl. The Duke sighed heavily again, while the Duchess clutched her heart and rolled her eyes. Even while in death, a person can't change that much. I get the impression as if you've been switched said the duke, looking at his daughter carefully. Since I came to my senses only recently, my memories have not yet fully recovered. The girl began to justify herself. Honey, it's been too little time. You shouldn't be so harsh, said the duchess. I would like to remind you that the social season is coming soon. Since your marriage to the crown prince has failed, I will find you another groom. Starting next week, you will be seeing candidates. You will also have to go through all the etiquette lessons again the duke announced. Darling, calm down, everything will be fine. Don't worry unnecessarily, remember our daughter hasn't had time to fully recover yet. The duchess gently stroked her furious spouse's shoulder. The duke set the cup on the table with a loud clink. Does it really matter much right now? We've already had enough humiliation when that lousy prince dared to annul the engagement. It's not enough to have a rumor going around that my daughter has lost her mind, shouted the duke. We need to marry her off to some poor bastard as soon as possible. Enough disgrace to our family. Even though the crown prince rejected her, she is still the daughter of the duke. By marrying her off, we can't forget the honor of the family. I have decided as her dowry, we will give her our diamond mine. Leah, remember. If you don't marry within a month, I will send you to a convent for the rest of your life. From this convent, you will not be able to return home. Now I understand why Leah decided to commit suicide. Her father is a true pervert, obsessed with his family's honor. The girl guessed. Damn, I'm really going to have to get married. If the duke figures me out, he'll probably get me hanged as a witch. And if the convent realizes there's another soul in this body, they'll stake me. In short, nothing good awaits me. I'm sure I'll find some fool to marry me. Then all will be well in my life, exclaimed Rosetta. Have you heard the news? Lady Valdemore has come to her senses. They say she's a little out of sorts, so the duke is offering a diamond mine as a dowry. And if there's nothing between her and the prince, I don't mind taking her in marriage, said Viscount Owen Canebrake. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you just said, said Kendrick, and slammed the book shut. He was the rear admiral of the East. Owen told me that Lady Valdemore, awake, now her father is looking for a groom for her. He's giving her a diamond mine as a dowry. I decided to court her. Stephen confessed. We were wondering if you were thinking of doing the same. It would be nice to get the diamond mine, noted Mike. 
Can't say it's interested me in the least, replied Kendrick. My father still won't let go of me, so I have no choice but to take care of her. And you probably want to rule the Eastern Seas, so you're not interested in the mine? Am I understanding this correctly? asked Stephen. We all know very well that women are lining up for you. I doubt you'd want to pick a lady with a defect, noted Mike. Obviously, any sighted person would choose me over any of you. So I can understand your eagerness to remove me from the list of candidates. In a loud voice, Kendrick said, And I hate to hear you say such vile things behind a lady's back. It's just disgusting. I have absolutely no interest in your filthy ambitions, so do as you see fit. So it comes out that your mother doesn't share your views. I recently learned that the Duke's daughter is supposed to have received a marriage proposal in your name. It was sent by your mother. With a wry smile, Owen remarked, Wow, this place is cozy. Maybe forget about revenge and just enjoy this life. The life of a well-to-do noble lady isn't so bad, exclaimed Rosetta, flopping down on the bed. No, I can't forget what Nick did to me. I must find that bilge rat, marinate him like a fish and serve him for dinner. The girl patted her cheeks. She must not relax. First, I must come up with a plan of further action. Then I should find out where my real body is. After all, I was a rather famous pirate. Why is there no mention of my death? Could it be that my body is still alive? First, I'll turn to the witch Calypso, and when she gives me my body back, then I'll deal with that traitor Nick. I would love to escape this house, but the Duke's daughter has absolutely no gems. She has no money. Earning money in any way will not work for me as my body is too weak. The only thing left for me to do is to get married. I'll find a poor guy who agrees to be my husband, save up some money and go in search of my body. I'm not going to live like this forever. Though it's full of delicious food and privilege, it's pretty boring. A maid entered the room and announced that an etiquette tutor had arrived. I will learn etiquette, improve my manners, and win some lord's heart. In my time, I've taken out dozens of ships with my bare hands. I'll be able to do that, too. The girl reassured herself. Hold steady. Now turn around carefully. You should be as graceful and elegant as a swan. At the moment, you are as clumsy as an octopus. You are straining your neck too much. The etiquette teacher had to constantly admonish the girl. And how can this body be so weak? The canaries in the cages look tougher, Rosetta thought to herself wistfully. When the lesson was over, the girl fell to the floor tiredly. Goodness, mistress, have you fainted again? The etiquette teacher exclaimed fearfully. Fine, let her think so and I'll get some rest, thought to herself Rosetta. No, I can't wear this. It would only fit a ten-year-old girl. Rosetta looked at the corset with horror. But you've worn something like this before. Besides, this corset is bigger than the last one, replied the maid. Hey, I told you I wouldn't wear it. Are you having trouble hearing me? Rosetta asked in an irritated voice and immediately realized that she had gone a little overboard. That was the tone she usually used to talk to pirates. It might have startled the maid. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you, Rosetta said with a smile. The girl had no choice but to agree to the corset. Very well, there you go. You see, my lady, it's not so scary. And don't yell like that, I didn't even squeeze. Breathe out again, I've tightened it, the maid asked. When the corset was finished, Rosetta fell into a veritable swoon. Ah, my lady, you are awake. I'm sorry, it's my fault. Please kill me, I deserve to die, sobbing tears, said the maid. You want me to kill you? That's an excellent idea. What's your name again? Rosetta muttered. My name is Anna, mistress. I beg you to spare me. The maid fell to her knees and slammed her head to the floor with all her might. Well, you yourself just prayed for death. Why did you change your mind so abruptly? Rosetta asked with a snort. She's a little emotional, but she's also loyal and hardworking. I think she'll be a good assistant to me. It would be nice to have at least one loyal servant here. Rosetta thought, looking at the bowed maid. All right, Anna, get up off the floor. I will not punish you even though you almost killed me, said Rosetta. She knew very well that the easiest way to get obedience was to manipulate, to push weakness. But from this day forward, you will have to obey me unconditionally. Do you understand? Rosetta asked the maid. She nodded vigorously. My lady, this is no good. You are a total failure in all your subjects. You can't dance at all. You have problems with speed reading and basic social behavior. 
The etiquette teacher grumbled in a displeased tone. I have absolutely no idea what to do with you. I'm leaving soon and in three days you have to meet with the candidates. At this rate, my reputation as a brilliant tutor of noble ladies will be ruined. By the way, your pride itself will also suffer. Rosetta picked up her teacup and finished her tea in one gulp. The etiquette teacher was beginning to annoy her. Hey, Madame Valmont, I have a very personal question for you. How much does his lordship pay you per week? Please tell me the amount, asked Rosetta to the teacher. The girl planned to squeeze some money out of her by stratagem. Why are you suddenly interested in this question? asked the teacher. I just had a wonderful thought come into my head. I've already been rejected once by a prince, and now rumors have started to spread that I'm having trouble with my head. Rosetta began to explain. And yet I dream of spending my days doing all sorts of naughty things with my future fiancé. The duke would obviously be upset if the public found out. Then my dear tutor's reputation will surely go down the drain. What are you implying now? The teacher clarified. I'm suggesting that we split your weekly pay in half. If you agree to that, then for the next three days, I will put my best effort into your classes. I swear to you so my word can be trusted, replied Rosetta. Okay, I agree to that, but I have one condition. You must continue to adhere to all my standards or else no money will be given to you, warned the teacher. Good, that's a wise decision. Rosetta shook the teacher's hand firmly. But don't think that everything will be smooth sailing from here on in your life. I suggest you prepare mentally for our lessons. And I promise, I'll make our next lessons a living hell. With a sneering grin, Madame Valmont said, Gosh, my lady, you look beautiful. The lessons with Madame Valmont have done you good. It is now possible to see the Duke's daughter at a glance. Anna exclaimed. To tell you the truth, when you first came to your senses, I was quite worried. It seemed to me that you had completely lost your lady's manners. At the maid's surprised look, Rosetta pulled a necklace out of her jewelry box and hid it in her bodice. Oh dear, are you ready to welcome your candidates? A joyous duchess entered the room. Hello, mother. Rosetta rose from the table and bowed before the duchess. Unbelievable. You have made such amazing progress in three days. You have really done well, Madame Valmont, marveled the Duchess. Madame Valmont faded her eyes in embarrassment. It seems I won't have to worry about your meeting with the candidates now. I am truly happy, my dear. My dear, our estate has received so many letters from prospective candidates. It will take you a month to meet each one, and I'm not sure we'll make it to the archipelago in time for the start of the season. I shouldn't take too long to choose a marriage companion. And the richer the choice, the easier it is to find the right one. I want someone who isn't particularly interested in marriage. It would be nice if he lived in the East or had a summer residence there, Rosetta thought to herself. A maid entered the room and announced that the first candidates had arrived at the manor. Rosetta had already met several candidates and not one was a match for her future spouse. Anna, how many more are there? Rosetta asked in a tired voice. It was hard for her to act like a noble lady for several hours. Ah, Leah, sit up straighter. The next candidate is certainly worth your attention. I'm glad that the Monterosa family is interested in our proposal, said the Duchess. Rosetta knew the Monterosa family very well. It is a family that is cursed and feared by absolutely all pirates. This eastern dynasty of admirals had not lost a single naval battle in the last 15 years. There was only one heir in the Monterosa family, Kendrick. At one time, he had chased the pirate Rosetta like a puppy. What am I supposed to do now? This man can recognize who is in front of him. If he recognizes me, I'll definitely never get rid of him. Should I use him for my own purposes? What if he betrays me like Nick did? Rosetta thought to herself. Anna pressed her face against the glass and announced loudly that Lord Monterosa had left his carriage and was heading toward the main entrance of the manor. Tell him I am ill, shouted the girl and ran towards the door. No sooner had the girl grabbed the doorknob than the door swung open. Standing on the threshold was Kendrick. Are you okay, lady? asked Kendrick. Yes. Smiling sweetly, Rosetta replied. She heard a pleasant sea scent from Kendrick. The girl hadn't seen him in years. He had grown from a no-nonsense guy into a charming man. Yes, now I can hardly call him an Admiral Cookie's son, the girl thought to herself. Lady, if you're really okay, get away from me, please, Kendrick asked. The girl hadn't realized she was standing too close to the Lord. Ah, my deepest apologies, the girl bowed before Kendrick. The girl was happy to see her old buddy, so she winked cheerfully at him. Rosetta noticed that the Duchess perked up at the sight of Kendrick. 
he was most likely a very valuable candidate. So, Kendrick? The girl started to speak, but the Lord stopped her. To you, I am Lord Monterosa. In an emotionless voice, Kendrick said, Very well, I will call you Lord Monterosa. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to ask, said Rosetta. Kendrick's behavior was annoying her. She could barely restrain herself from slapping him. I have no questions for you. In the same emotionless voice, Kendrick said, Admiral Cookie's damn son. He's always acted like he's ready to love me for centuries, so what's the big deal now? He doesn't recognize me because my appearance has changed? Now I don't have to be afraid of him revealing me. Annoyed, the girl thought. Rosetta took a sip of tea and immediately felt the drink burn her throat. What a blast for all of this, screamed the girl. Kendrick looked at the girl in surprise. Once upon a time, he had often heard similar expressions. I'll take you to your room, said Kendrick. Kendrick took the girl in his arms and silently carried her to her room. I think that's enough. You can go on your own from here. Kendrick stopped outside Rosetta's room. Lady, may I ask you something? Would you mind calling me Admiral Cookie's son? Unexpectedly, Kendrick asked the girl. And may I ask why you would ask me such a thing? Rosetta pretended that Kendrick's words surprised her. It seems to me that we have seen each other before, said Kendrick. Oh, I've been feeling dramatically dizzy for some reason. To tell you the truth, I haven't felt well since this morning, exclaimed the girl. She was afraid to reveal her true identity in front of Kendrick. And if it wasn't for the tea, he would never be able to figure her out. I apologize if I upset you with my question. And if you don't need any further assistance, I'll bow out, said Kendrick to the girl with a low bow. By the way, do you remember about the Kigort relic you entrusted me with last time? I'm afraid I lost it. With a cheerful smile, Kendrick said. A week passed, but Kendrick still hadn't contacted Rosetta. This made the girl very angry because she didn't understand what he was up to. One thing was clear. Kendrick had guessed who was hiding behind the identity of the Duke's daughter. If I had known before what a scoundrel he was, I would never have been so kind to him. What a thing to lose such a precious relic. With anger raging inside, Rosetta snapped the fan in half. Through the noise in her ears, the girl heard the excited voice of the maid. Excuse me, could you repeat that, please? In an innocent voice, Rosetta asked. His lordship has asked if you would mind keeping him company at a summer ball to be held at the Renoir residence in the archipelago. The maid repeated. Yes, as you already know, the social season begins in two weeks. You weren't planning on missing out on such fun, were you? Asked Stephen. The duchess sitting in the room coughed loudly, letting her daughter know that she wouldn't be able to miss the ball. Of course I'll attend, Leah exclaimed with a smile. I would be immensely honored if you would join me, especially if you would do me the honor of accompanying me to the ball, said Stephen. The duchess crossed her fingers. She was against her daughter being accompanied by Stephen. I need to get my mother's approval first. I cannot decide such matters on my own, Rosetta said with a smile. Yes, of course, I will await your answer. By the way, three carriages, over a hundred acres of land, five horses, and twenty servants will also await your answer. Stephen proudly thrust his chin upward. I'm glad you decided to turn him down. I can't believe your father wanted to approve the offer of the Marquise's second son. I even think he has a little trouble with his head, exclaimed the Duchess as the door closed behind Stephen. But that's not what this is about right now. Leah, just notice how many invitations of all kinds you've gotten. You'll attend picnics, exhibitions, balls. This season promises to be wonderful. By the way, Mother, to be honest, I'm not sure I necessarily have to go to the archipelago. I think there is already someone I would like to be engaged to, Rosetta exclaimed. She really didn't feel like attending all sorts of balls, exhibitions, and picnics. I understand that you're worried. You were actually the crown princess. I never thought you'd have to make your social debut like this. The Duchess took her daughter's hand. She wanted to comfort her and assure her of her support. You have no idea how much I myself worried during my debut, but I managed it, and I'm sure you'll do even better than I did. By the way, I've hired a dance tutor for you. You should change into your dancing attire. My goodness, my lady, you are beautiful. You are like an angel coming down from heaven, the maids exclaimed in admiration. Yes, that face is indeed beautiful. Why would the mistress of this body want to poison herself for some man? Thought the girl looking at herself in the mirror. 
If I give you my body back, I will never let my life be ruined by some man. By the way, Kendrick still hasn't shown up here. But I shouldn't worry. The money is slowly dripping in and things are going pretty smoothly. I should forget about him and start dealing with my own problems. I'll be sure to deal with everything and get back at Nick. When Rosetta opened the door of her room, she almost screamed in terror. Standing on the doorstep was Kendrick. What the hell did you come here for? In a surprised voice, the girl asked. Welcome. Thank you for coming all this way. Smiling happily, the Duchess said. Kendrick answered her that the road to the Duke's house was a joy for him. Have a good time, said the Duchess and left her daughter's room. How far have you gotten in your waltz lessons? asked Kendrick to Rosetta. I had a few lessons before I lost my memory, but I've pretty much forgotten everything, replied the girl. Then we'll have to start from scratch. Kendrick held out his hand to the girl. Rosetta put her palm into Kendrick's hand. Remember well, my lady, this is the basic position, said Kendrick to the girl and spun her around in a dance. Rosetta felt herself getting dizzy with excitement, such a feeling she had never experienced before. The girl literally forced herself to calm down and concentrate on the dance. The first time the girl had seen Kendrick was eight years ago. The admiral had hired her to free his son from captivity. Hey, babe, Admiral Cookie's son, did you die in there by any chance? Your father will pay me if I bring you back alive, shouted the girl when she saw Kendrick. I certainly expected you to look like a sissy, but I didn't think you were so smarmy. After that incident, the pirate Rosetta and the admiral's son became good buddies. I never took him for a man. He always seemed like a smarmy inept. So why am I so uncomfortable around him now? Pull yourself together. Don't let anyone else spin you around. Rosetta thought to herself. You're doing better than I expected, noted Kendrick. It turns out my body remembers the moves, even though I've lost my memory, remarked Rosetta. Lady, I think you have some sort of grudge against me, said Kendrick. You left a bad impression of yourself last time. You told me to back off like I was some kind of leech, so I thought you despised me, Rosetta replied. Kendrick told the girl that he did not despise her, she thought. Still, such a strained response hardly means you like me, the girl remarked. Sometimes when I look at you, I am reminded of an old acquaintance of mine. I myself find it hard to understand what I'm trying to find in you. I'm even beginning to question my sanity, Kendrick admitted. But one thing's for sure, I'm incredibly interested in you. Kendrick kissed the girl's hand. You have progressed very well since we last met, but your manner of speech is a separate conversation. Sometimes I get the impression you're a portly bully. The etiquette teacher, Madame Valmont, remarked. The polite phrase, if you don't mind, would greatly transform your speech. Why don't you try it? Madame, I hope you'll be kicking back soon if you don't mind. Smiling sweetly, Rosetta said. Kendrick came to the Duke's residence daily to teach his daughter to dance. I know you are leaving for the archipelago in a couple days. The first ball will be held at the Renoir residence. Would you refuse me the honor of accompanying me to this ball? Asked Kendrick. What did you just say? Surprised Rosetta. I asked if you would like to keep me company, repeated his question to Kendrick. It must be a trap. And even if it isn't, I still can't say yes. Rumors that I've gone mad have swept all of high society. I can't bring Kendrick into this, the girl thought to herself. I've already promised one man to keep him company, Rosetta replied. And who is that? asked Kendrick. It is a lord of the Marquis of Bingley's family, said Rosetta after a little thought. I see, then allow me to deviate, said Kendrick to the girl. Before you leave, let me give you one piece of advice. I have only taught you a waltz that will only be played at the opening of the ball. Therefore, it will be best for you not to participate in all further dances, no matter who invites you. The nobles may find it rather odd that you don't know any other dances, so see you on the archipelago. My lady on the archipelago, you will need to be even more strict about your manners. In high society, rumors spread very quickly. You will need to be careful of every slightest movement. Anna warned. Aye, I will, grumbled Rosetta. If that lousy guy did figure me out, why won't he ask me directly? Why make it so difficult? That kid probably knows where my body is. He could help me in my search. The girl thought to herself. But remembering what Nick did, I can't be sure he won't betray me. He could have changed dramatically over the years. And I can see that he's not the same puppy he was with me four years ago. What am I supposed to do now? I really need to find an informant, 
If I head east, I'll start looking for him first thing. As the girl fell asleep, she thought of Kendrick. Still, when he was younger, he was much nicer. Snotty, why are you still following me? The girl asked Kendrick. I like you. I want to marry you, Kendrick admitted. Damn, psycho, I'm so sick of you, grumbled the girl. Okay, well, since you're trying to get me to marry you, let's evaluate you. The girl grabbed Kendrick by the scruff of the neck and looked him carefully in the eyes. Kendrick looked away from her eyes in embarrassment. Where are you going when you can't even maintain eye contact? The girl pushed Kendrick away from her irritably. Did I say I was good at it? You shouldn't have opened your back so flippantly. Kendrick pointed the gun at the girl. Startled, Rosetta opened her eyes. She realized that thankfully it was only a dream. Mistress, look out the window, we're pulling up. As soon as we cross the gate, we'll be in the archipelago. Anna exclaimed as she leaned against the window. Looking out the window, Rosetta saw the majestic city. For years on end, she had longed to come here. My lady, please remember your manners at all times. Your every move will be judged here. Anna helped Rosetta put her hat on. Wait, you mean Lord Bingley refused to accompany me? Rosetta clarified. Yes, but not just him. All the other lords did too. It seems to me that they all conspired at once. One said he was ill, another suddenly had a partner and so on. So there's no one for you to go with, replied Anna. So you claim you can't go with me. May I ask why? Rosetta asked in an annoyed voice. She stuck a sharp kitchen knife into the countertop. You see, some circumstances have developed. Something very serious has happened. I have no way of influencing it. In a trembling voice, Lord Bingley replied, And what exactly have you had happen? The girl threw the knife towards the Lord. The knife embedded itself in the couch right between the Lord's legs. To tell you the truth, I was confronted by Lord Monterosa. I had no choice but to retreat, replied the Lord. Thank you for letting me know. You are now free to go. Smiling sweetly, Rosetta said, Although outwardly the girl seemed calm, inside her rage raged. She really wanted to find Lord Monterose and wring his neck. And what am I supposed to do next? It's become abundantly clear now. Kendrick knows exactly who I am, and so he won't back down. Does that mean I need to tell him everything? Should I explain the whole situation to him and ask for his help? What if he declares that I'm a witch? Or maybe I should still try to marry the first man I meet, cash in on his wealth and escape from here. But that's too complicated for me. I'm not used to manipulating men. Anna entered the room and announced that Lord Monterosa was coming to visit them. Kendrick arrived at Rosetta's door with a large bouquet of flowers. I apologize for such a sudden visit, your lordship. Kendrick bowed courteously before the duchess. I'll leave you two alone. I won't disturb you. With a merry giggle, the duchess said and left the room. I think she's gotten into the habit of leaving me alone with that man, Rosetta thought wistfully. Lady, do you like flowers? Kendrick held out a bouquet to the girl. Well, flowers and flowers, you better answer me why you did this? Rosetta asked. Kendrick pretended to completely misunderstand her question. For what purpose do you interfere? Shifting her eyebrows angrily, the girl asked. Oh, that's what you mean. I merely advised those people to look for young ladies of their own level. None of them are worthy of you, Kendrick replied. And in what way does that concern you? Who should I choose as my partner now? the girl asked in an angry voice. She threw a bouquet of flowers on the floor. I'd like to say this, but why not dispense with the formalities? You're the one who has become distant from me over time, said Kendrick to the girl. Please stop distracting me. I was trying to protest you meddling in the affairs of my potential partners, Leah exclaimed. So be it, but it was only for the benefit of my longtime friend. In truth, you have always been a little naive. Instead of being nervous, you should ask me to accompany you. Kendrick didn't understand why the girl didn't realize the basic things. So that's what you set this up for? I'd rather have anyone else than you, Rosetta said with a contemptuous snort. Leah, four years ago I lost something valuable, and that item is now in your possession. Kendrick pulled his dagger from its sheath. And what are you going to do now? The girl asked in an angry tone. Hold out your hand to me, Kendrick asked. Rosetta held out her hand. Kendrick placed his dagger in her palm. Once upon a time, I knew a girl who injured her right arm, and because of it, she would relax her right shoulder every time she had to pick up something heavy. Just like you are right now, Kendrick said with a smile. Leah, I'm going to ask you one last time. Will you let me ask you out? Said Kendrick to the girl. Putting on her best dress, Rosetta walked down to Kendrick. You look simply magical, my lady. 
Kendrick bowed courteously to the girl. Kendrick extended his hand to the girl. Rosetta noted to herself that the Lord's gaze had grown colder and more determined. When Kendrick had been a teenager, his eyes had always been filled with warmth and kindness. I shudder to think if someone else would take your hand, said Kendrick and kissed the girl's hand. It wouldn't make sense if it wasn't you, Lord Kendrick. Rosetta decided to get in on the game as well. If Kendrick decided to flirt with her, she would do the same. There were far more people at the ball than Rosetta had expected. Her ladyship Lady Leah Valdemore and his lordship Lord Kendrick Monterosa, the herald announced. Lady Valdemore, the very same one. She was betrothed to the crown prince, wasn't she? Only a few months have passed and here she is parading around with the lord. What a scandal. Immediately the court ladies whispered. Just be patient for a while. After the first dance, they'll forget all about you, whispered Kendrick. He noticed that the girl shrank back in fright. When the first dance is over, we'll have an opportunity to sneak out of here. I suggest we take it. The music began to play. Kendrick led the girl to the middle of the dance hall. Rosetta was surprised to note to herself that she really enjoyed dancing with Kendrick. Kendrick, I'd like to ask you something. You mentioned a certain item that you said is in my possession. What will you do if you find it? The girl asked. Kendrick didn't have time to answer. He was interrupted. You seem angry with me for not even coming up to say hello, Lady Valdemore, exclaimed the red-haired boy who approached. Next to him was a frail girl with bright eyes and dark hair. Who the hell is that? Rosetta thought to herself in surprise. My respects, your highness, Kendrick said unexpectedly. Rosetta realized that the red-haired guy was Crown Prince Diego. My respects, your highness, bowing said Rosetta. So you really have lost your memory? asked the crown prince. Rosetta apologized to him for not recognizing him right away. I wish I had never met the prince here. I don't know how to act now. It's a good thing they spread a rumor around the capital that I've lost my memory. I won't have to pretend I'm head over heels in love with him. Rosetta thought, Oh, where are my manners? I'd like to introduce you to my fiance. Her name is Audrey, exclaimed the prince so he decided to put on quite a show by introducing his fiancée to his ex. Well, let's play a game. Let's see who wins against who. The girl thought to herself, gloatingly. Allow me to introduce my companion, Lord Kendrick Monterose. Rosetta, I clung tightly to the Lord's arm. Kendrick wanted to release his hand, but the girl prevented him from doing so. Your Highness, do you have some business with my companion? Kendrick asked. He placed his hand on Rosetta's arm. There is no need to speak to me in such a rude tone. I only came to inquire about her ladyship's well-being. I was very anxious about her. After all, she tried to kill herself, and it was all because I fell in love with someone else, replied Diego. Oh, you, roared Rosetta. She felt like feeding the crown prince to a shark. Don't worry, I'll take care of my companion's health myself. Kendrick clamped a hand over the girl's mouth to keep her from saying anything unnecessary. Our verbal duel can be heard by the entire kingdom, so allow us to depart. Kendrick picked Rosetta up and carried her as far away from the ballroom as possible. I told you not to draw too much attention to yourself, Kendrick muttered. The girl was outraged by his behavior. She really wanted to put the crown prince in his place. Always think about what you want to say. Your language can lead to irreversible consequences. Your grace, you look absolutely gorgeous tonight, Owen exclaimed. Rosetta was pleased to see him. He used to be her informant. Owen, you stay with my companion and I'll go find a suitable drink for her, said Kendrick to his mate and went off to get a drink for Rosetta. If this man is a Viscount, why the hell is he moonlighting as an informant, thought Rosetta, looking at Owen. Well, come to think of it, he always seemed suspicious to me. He rarely got involved with aristocrats, though they always paid generously. Owen was far too good looking for a mere informant. Why didn't I notice all this before? If he guesses that Leah's body contains another person's soul, he will definitely sell that information at a favorable price. Then I'll definitely be accused of witchcraft and have my head taken off. Owen always knew such information that there was literally a line of people lining up to get it. I'm pretty sure he knows where my body is right now, but I can't ask him that question directly. My lady, you look worried, Owen remarked. Hey, I know exactly what you do. Tell me everything you know about Scarlet Dawn, demanded Rosetta. I will pay you generously for any information. And how could the Duke's daughter possibly know about me and Scarlet Dawn? 
Did you really find out about Kendrick's past? Owen wondered. My lady, you really are a good detective. Since you know about me, then you know for a fact that Rosetta was his first love. I hope that's enough as payment for your services. Rosetta tossed Owen a bag of jewelry. I would be happy to oblige you, madam. Owen tucked the bag of jewelry into a hidden pocket of his surtout. Rosetta stepped out onto the terrace and breathed in the night air. She longed to be back on the ship and hear the sound of the sea. My lady, there you are. I've been looking all over the palace for you, Kendrick exclaimed as he approached. And why were you looking for me? asked the girl. I was afraid you would disappear from my life again, Rosetta, Kendrick confessed. Come on, come on. This is your chance to confess everything to him and ask for help. He can hardly betray me, anyone in this world but him. But whatever it turns out to be, I have no right to do that to him. The girl thought sadly. Someday he'll be the best admiral in the country, and a brilliant future and a beautiful wife by his side await him. I know, one request from me, and he will immediately deny all that. He won't hesitate to go to the bottom of the salty sea with me. I can't do that to him, and I shouldn't do it. I guess I'll have to leave him after all. I can't ruin his life. I see you're so worried you've even forgotten my name, Rosetta asked in a sarcastic tone. Kendrick lowered his eyes to the floor. The girl felt sorry for him, but she could not act otherwise. She should have protected him from himself. And it turns out I'm not that drunk compared to you. You're right, I probably had a little too much to drink. Cedric tucked a strand of hair behind the girl's ear. My lady, drink this drink, you should feel better afterward. A smiling Anna entered the room. And what time did I get home last night, mumbled Rosetta. She was experiencing a wild headache. And don't you remember anything? You couldn't even walk. Lord Kendrick behaved like a true gentleman and personally brought you home in his carriage. Blissfully closing her eyes, Anna said, Your mother was delighted with what happened. She is already thinking about who to invite to the wedding. She's sure something happened between you two on the way from the residence to the estate. Anna, tell me, you remember the day I poisoned myself, don't you? Tell me what happened, for I remember almost nothing, Rosetta asked. Rumors of the prince's amorousness were always the most discussed topic among the nobility, but it didn't bother Leah. After six months, people began to talk about the fact that the prince was allegedly seen with another woman and that she had even moved into the palace. One day Leah received a letter from the prince. He announced that he was breaking off the engagement. Leah immediately ordered Anna to prepare a carriage. When the girl returned to the manor, she was in a pitiful state. She could not walk. The butler carried her into the room in his arms. The next day, a rumor spread around the capital that Leah had taken poison with her and proudly drank it in front of the crown prince. There is clearly something wrong with this story. This whole situation seems very suspicious to me, thought Rosetta, sitting in front of the mirror. Anna, and one last question. Do you think I loved the crown prince before I lost my memory? What can you tell me about our relationship? asked the girl. To be honest, it always seemed to me that you didn't love the prince, replied Anna. Well, if that's the case, then now intentional murder can't be ruled out, Rosetta muttered. Rosetta was really hoping that Kendrick wouldn't show up for the boat ride, but things didn't go the way she wanted them to. The girl had to get in the same boat with Kendrick. I know for a fact that you weren't on the list for the boat trip. Then why did you come here? Rosetta exclaimed. My face is known to absolutely everyone. I don't need an invitation, replied Kendrick. Then why are you my escort again? resented the girl. Didn't you get my letter? I asked your parents to accompany you to all sorts of events. They responded by agreeing to me. Kendrick began to slowly remove his surtout. Kendrick slipped the surcoat over the girl's shoulders. He thought she looked cold in the thin dress. And why did you do that? Don't you want my beauty to be seen by other lords? The girl muttered. In a way, yes. It would be wrong of me not to keep you away from people interested only in your looks. I see more than just attractive looks, after all, replied Kendrick. Kendrick removed the brooch from the girl's hair and began to rub it nervously in his hands. You can lose all your beauty or, on the contrary, become even more beautiful. I don't care. I thought I was crazy, but I'm gradually becoming more and more convinced I'm right. I could have caught you, swallowed you like a tiny fish, but my swim in an ocean full of tears and despair has gone on too long as it is. I'll be honest, my patience is running out, 
and even if it's just a play of my imagination, I don't care. Kendrick attached the brooch to the girl's hair again. Rosetta sat silent, unable to utter a word. Kendrick helped the girl out of the boat and led her to follow him. I want to rejoice. Our walk continues. Kendrick stopped near a large ship. What a most beautiful creature this is, Rosetta marveled. I knew you would like it, said Kendrick. Rosetta walked around the ship and scrutinized every detail. It had been a long time since she had been on deck. She really wanted to go back to her past. I can't believe I'm on a real warship. I think Toulon would certainly suit those cannons. I bet one of my crew would definitely try to drink rum out of them for a joke, Rosetta thought to herself. Leah, the banquet is about to begin. Would you like to join us? Kendrick asked the girl. Rosetta smiled and said yes. The ship touched down. The girl felt slightly nauseous. In about eight hours, we will be sailing past the drawbridge, Kendrick announced. Suddenly, the girl vomited into the sea. Rosetta realized that this body was suffering from seasickness. I think my insides have a real merry-go-round in there, Rosetta muttered. She had never felt so ill. Please stay here for a while. I'll get you some water. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back, said Kendrick to the girl and headed for the water. Owen watched Rosetta's actions carefully. Looks like it's time for action, Owen thought to himself. Madame Valdemore, I've met Calypso, and you know she told me something. She reminded me of your curse, said to Rosetta as Owen approached. From Calypso, Owen learned that Rosetta's soul had moved into another body, but the Viscount saw that the girl was suffering from seasickness. Rosetta had no such thing. Could Calypso have made a mistake? You certainly don't have time for important conversations today, my lady. Perhaps you can spare me some time next time. Owen noticed the girl wasn't taking in the information he was telling her. My lady, would you like to stand up and let the light breeze envelop you? I think it will help you refresh your head. Anything is better than just sitting. Owen helped Rosetta up from the bench. Suddenly the girl swayed and went overboard. Rosetta suddenly realized that she was sinking rapidly to the bottom. The current is too strong. One wrong move and I'll crash into the ship. I need to swim away from it as fast as possible, the girl thought to herself. Since her outfit was too heavy, the girl threw off her shoes and tried to pull off her corset. Rosetta felt her strength begin to leave her. She was desperately short of air. Cedric saw that the unconscious girl was going down. Owen thought that if Rosetta's soul was in Leah's body, she would definitely get out of this situation. While Owen pondered his next actions, Kendrick threw off his outer clothing and rushed into the water. What on earth have I done? What if I'm wrong and Leah has nothing to do with the pirate Rosetta? Owen thought fearfully. A short while later, Kendrick, along with Rosetta, showed themselves on the surface of the water. Kendrick ripped open her corset on the girl and began CPR. Come on, wake up, please. I don't want to lose you again. Ro, can you hear me? In a frightened voice, Kendrick muttered. Thankfully, with a loud cough, the girl began to breathe. Kendrick kissed the girl passionately on the lips. Waking up, Rosetta prayed to God that everything that had happened to her was a terrible dream. She opened one eye and saw that she was not alone in the room. Sitting next to her bed was Kendrick. You awake already? How are you feeling? Asked Kendrick. Holy buckets, it's him again. The girl thought doomfully. I'm so glad you're okay, said Kendrick and stroked the girl's head. Aren't you getting a little too close to me? Leah resented. By the way, where are my clothes and jewelry? Asked the girl. Kendrick answered her that they were carried away by the current. He promised to get her a new dress and jewelry. Okay, I'll agree to that. Answer me one more question. Where are we now? Rosetta inquired. Kendrick told her that she was currently in one of the rooms of the Monterosa mansion, which was located in the archipelago. You were feverish, so I had to bring you here. By the way, just recently I received a letter from your parents. Be sure to read it. It's very interesting. Kendrick held out an envelope to the girl. What does it mean? Rosetta asked in a surprised voice as she read the letter to the end. I agree with your parents. We should get married, Kendrick said in a calm voice. And why should I marry you all of a sudden? The girl was indignant. She didn't like the idea at all. But this isn't just a letter, is it? It's an official statement from your parents. To make a long story short, we already have the blessing. I tore your corset on you and kissed you in front of a dozen witnesses. To avoid rumors, we need to play the wedding. Kendrick explained. Hell, even I'd think we were in love for allowing ourselves to do that, Rosetta muttered in a doomed voice. 
I understand you're not interested in marriage at the moment, but there's no other way we can stop the rumors from spreading. Just imagine what society thinks of us now, Kendrick asked. If you're afraid to marry me, we'll draw up a contract. Our marriage won't be real. I'll agree to whatever terms you want. And if you want, we can head east right after the wedding. I can arrange that. Also, we can neglect some marital duties. Everything here will be of your own free will and consent. Do I look like a crazy person? I shall never marry you, exclaimed Rosetta. Kendrick, I've told you several times that I'm not like you. I really want you to shine. I want you to find yourself a beautiful wife and become an admiral under whose watchful eye the seas of the East will be forever safe. And I hope our paths will never cross in the future. I've already broken up with someone once before. I can't forget that mistake. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Kendrick? Anna had been trying to elicit as much information as she could from her mistress for days on end about what had happened to her while traveling. What makes you think there were any events going on? The girl asked. The maid's insistence bored her. Why, don't you read the newspapers? There are a great many rumors about you here. Let me read them to you, said the maid and began to read the paper loudly. Without the slightest hesitation, Lord Kendrick rushed to the aid of the drowning girl. Strong feelings came over them like a tsunami. Lady Leah awoke in the middle of the night to find Lord Kendrick lying beside her. Terrible, what a nightmare, the girl exclaimed doomedly and collapsed onto the couch. Kendrick was right. There was no stopping the rumors. Rosetta changed into her maid's costume and walked to the fence. She wanted to leave the Duke's mansion unnoticed. The girl tried to climb the fence, but she lacked strength. Leah's body was extremely weak. My lady, how about we help you? Just don't run far away. Lord Monterosa should be arriving soon. Rosetta was approached by smiling guards. One of the guards knelt down and helped the girl climb the fence. Rosetta thanked the guards for their help. Suddenly, she heard a male voice behind her. Turning around, she saw Owen. Leah, jump down here. Don't be afraid. I'll catch you, shouted Owen. The girl jumped right on top of the Viscount's head. She was angry with him because of what happened on the ship. Thank you for being such a wonderful stand-in for me, the girl exclaimed and ran away. Rosetta came running into the center of town. She was glad that everything she had planned had come true. Now she had the money to go east. Turning down one of the alleyways, the girl saw an old woman in a purple cloak. In the old woman, she recognized Calypso. Calypso, what are you doing here? Rosetta wondered. Rosetta, don't you know that Calypso is everywhere? Although I didn't expect to meet you today, replied the old woman. So you do realize who is in front of you now? Clarified the girl. Of course, for Calypso sees everything. And you met me because it was time. If it had been early, our paths would not have crossed. Rosetta. I know for a fact that you don't need to go east. You seek your body, but it has been resting at the bottom of the sea for four years. Even Calypso can't revive a fish-eaten skeleton. What are you talking about? And what then of the soul of the mistress of this body? Asked the girl. It's out there where my gaze can't reach it. Probably in another world. She can't come back here, replied Calypso. Oh, for crying out loud. Then at least give me my appearance back, please. Curse me again. Put a curse that will change my body asked the girl. Rosetta, you know you can only put one curse on one body, no other way. Your curse is to move your soul, explained Calypso to the girl. So what now? Am I going to be a bird in a golden cage for the rest of my life? Shivering with her whole body, Rosetta asked. If you don't like your fate, drink this. This body can no longer hold your soul. When you drink this potion, you will fall asleep again. Calypso held out a vial of the potion to the girl. If I spend the rest of my life in this body, I will never be able to return to the ship. Even if I manage to escape, this body is too weak for piracy. The girl thought to herself. Rosetta wanted to take a sip of the potion, but stopped herself in time. There was too much she had to do to survive. Also, the girl has him. Kendrick, Admiral Cookie's son. Ugh, Leah, why did you run away? If you don't want to, we can skip the wedding, said the girl to Kendrick, who ran up. Please don't ever run away from me again. Kendrick pulled the girl tightly against him. Well, you made your own decision to get involved in all of this, so don't blame me. Right now, you're all I have left, Rosetta thought to herself and fainted. My lady, we didn't think you'd wake up anymore, exclaimed an excited Anna. Why would we? I would never let that happen. How long have I been asleep? asked the girl. 
Anna told her that she had not regained consciousness for more than ten days. I see. I will have one request for you. Invite Lord Monterose to my room, asked Rosetta. Are you so disgusted with the idea of marrying me that you decided to run away from home? Asked Kendrick to the girl. That's not the point. I called you out for a different reason. I agree. Let's get married. We'll live with you for better and for worse, said the girl. I hope you realize there's no going back, warned Kendrick. Kendrick rested his head on Rosetta's shoulder. I'm going to have to marry him because there's no other way out. He's my last hope of getting back to the sea. Being near him, I'll be able to breathe the salty sea air regularly, Rosetta thought to herself. By the way, I took your advice and drew up a contract. Please read it, Rosetta pointed with her hand to a scribbled piece of paper. Kendrick took the quill and signed the contract. What did you do? Why did you sign without reading the contract? Weren't you taught that you should read first and only then sign? In a surprised voice, the girl exclaimed, I agree to whatever terms you want, I don't care, replied Kendrick. What a jerk! What if I wanted you to be my slave? asked Rosetta. Then I would be. Maybe that's my dream, who knows? Putting his hand on his heart, said Kendrick. I'm marrying Kendrick today. It's only now that I've started to realize it. My crew would go overboard with such news. They'd have such a feast in Kendrick's honor. Rosetta muttered to herself as she looked at her reflection in the mirror. Kendrick walked into the room. Do you like my wedding dress? Asked Rosetta to her husband-to-be. Yes, I really like your dress. I am the luckiest man in the world. I can't believe you're going to be my spouse soon. Kendrick took Rosetta's hands in his. Kendrick leaned over to the girl and kissed her forehead. You don't mind practicing? I just don't want to embarrass myself at the ceremony, Kendrick admitted. Rosetta only laughed merrily in response. My foster father, the father of the pirates of all seas, Kurgoth, once told me, to love is to be willing to give up everything for someone dear to you. But I'm not willing to do that for Kendrick. I can't forget about piracy, thought Rosetta walking down the aisle. Also, I will constantly remember Nick's betrayal. Does that mean I don't love Kendrick? And now that the bridegrooms have sworn their allegiance to each other before our Lord, they may seal their vows with a kiss, the archbishop announced. One cannot love too much. It is dangerous, thought Rosetta and kissed Kendrick on the lips. Leah, dear, the archbishop asks you to take a moment, said Kendrick to his spouse. May I congratulate you on your marriage, your highness, said the archbishop to the girl. Thank you, your eminence. Rosetta bowed before the archbishop. Your spiritual energy has changed, madam. By the way, did you know that lilies represent purity and sincerity? I want to warn you that a grave danger is about to come. Only you can handle it. The archbishop warned the girl. Rosetta looked at the archbishop in surprise. She absolutely did not understand what he wanted to tell her. Ah, there you are. Congratulations on your wedding, exclaimed the crown prince as he approached. I didn't think you'd come, your highness. Kendrick said in a surprised voice. It was I who persuaded him to come. They say the gardens of the Valdemore family are incredibly beautiful. Would you show them to me? Audrey asked Kendrick. Of course you can see our gardens, but I'm not sure you'll be able to find anything incredible to see there, grumbled Rosetta. Kendrick agreed to give Audrey a short tour of the gardens. Isn't it time for you to get back to business, your eminence? Asked the prince to the archbishop. The archbishop bowed and hurried away. I have been looking forward to our meeting. I think you know the reason better than I do, said the prince to Rosetta. The girl noticed the calypso pendant on his chest. Suddenly, Rosetta's whole body shook. She felt uncomfortable. Can you really feel it? The prince asked the girl and gently touched her face. What do you mean? What am I supposed to feel? In an agitated voice, asked Rosetta. Be quiet. I am the one asking the questions here. And the first of them is, who are you? Asked the prince. Why are you so pale? Were you scared of something? I want to give you something before I go. We'll talk to you next time. The prince handed the girl the bracelets. Those are my and Nick's paired bracelets. Oh shit, what have you managed to do, Nick? Annoyed, the girl thought. Nick and the crown prince. What on earth do these two have in common? Kendrick might know something about it. We'll have to ask him. In the evening, Rosetta allowed Kendrick to lie in bed with her. There was only one condition. He was not to touch her. Oh, my girl, it seems like just yesterday I was holding you in my arms, just a baby, and now you're so big. I shall never forget the first time you put your tiny fingers around my bracelet, exclaimed the Duchess. 
We plan to have a small reception when we reach the east. Please spend the summer and fall with us. Those seasons are especially nice in those parts, said Kendrick to his newfound relatives. We will certainly think about your offer and give you an answer a little later. Well, you have a long journey ahead of you so we won't keep you, said the Duke. I was so eager to get away from that crazy family, but now for some reason, I am absolutely not happy about it. Probably because those two didn't even get a chance to see their real daughter off on her final journey, thought Rosetta looking out the window at the Duke's distant estate. Anna, do you happen to know how far we have to travel? asked Rosetta to the maid. We have a whole week to go there, but that doesn't upset me at all. I really want to get there. They say that the Lord's Castle has a magnificent view of the sea, exclaimed Anna joyfully. There, one dream come true, I will live by the sea. When we get to the east, I'll try to track down Nick as soon as possible and get in touch with someone from the Marine League. Rosetta thought to herself, I know Owen will get any information he can for money. The only thing is, he might be resentful of me since he left the wedding without a word to me. Also, I'll have to talk to Kendrick about my real identity. I may have to make him keep his mouth shut. By the way, where's Kendrick? asked Rosetta to the maid. She suddenly realized that she had not seen Kendrick again after they got into the carriage. His lordship now has a great deal of business of national importance piled upon him. That is why he had to ride in a separate carriage with his private secretary. Why do you ask? Have you missed him already? Anna asked with a smile. A few days later, Kendrick was able to solve all the important tasks so he invited his wife for a walk on the beach. Rosetta couldn't take her eyes off the glistening water for a few minutes. She never thought she would ever be by the sea again. Come on, I want to show you one amazing place, said Kendrick to the girl. Seeing the statue, the girl froze in place in surprise. Why is Toulon here? Rosetta wondered. Kendrick told her that he had found it on the beach a few months ago. Toulon is a memory of Kurgoth, but his relic I never lost. Kendrick placed a wreath of white flowers on his spouse's head. I apologize for being late. Are you ready? A priest approached the newlyweds. Wait, what's going on now? Rosetta wondered. Our wedding. We must swear allegiance to each other and to your God. Kendrick held out a bouquet of flowers to his spouse. Are you out of your mind? Don't you know what this means? A vow like that cannot be broken, or you will be lost forever and ever, exclaimed Rosetta. And why should I stay alive if you're not around? I'm willing to go through hell for the chance to hold your hand. Do you remember what you said to me then? Kendrick asked the girl. Once upon a time, Rosetta confessed to Kendrick that she didn't see the point of a wedding dress and ceremony. All she wants is a pontic priest and a bottle of good rum. We'll stand with my husband-to-be in front of the ship. We'll spend the rest of our lives together on and vow to go down on the same day at the same hour. What could be more beautiful? Rosetta asked then. It's just as you wanted. I even brought a bottle of rum with me, said Kendrick and uncorked the bottle. Are you sure you want to go that far? asked the girl. Kendrick answered her that he was ready to go with her even to the end of the world. The priest began to read out the words of the wedding ceremony. Rosetta, do you agree to live with me for the rest of your life? Kendrick asked the girl. Yes, you stupid son of Admiral Cookie, shouted Rosetta loudly. Kendrick snuggled up to his spouse and kissed her on the lips. You have sealed your vows with a kiss, so I will go, said the priest and hurried away. I literally knew it was you right away. You have a unique accent, and you arch your eyebrows in a special way when you talk. You also cover your right eye when you smile, said Kendrick to the girl. You also have a unique communication style. When you talk to someone, you tilt your head to the side. If you don't like the person or the topic of conversation, you start biting your lip. And ever since you hurt your right shoulder, you always relax your hand when you have to pick something up. And most importantly, the first time I met you, I could smell the sea from you. As for Toulon, that's all that's left. Your body I couldn't find, I'm sorry. After the wedding ceremony, Kendrick took Rosetta to a local pub. Pay attention. There are a lot of kids working here. These are the orphans you've been looking out for. I remember you wanted to give them hope for a brighter future, said Kendrick to the girl. Thank you. Rosetta squeezed Kendrick's hand tightly. She was grateful to him for not leaving the orphans unattended. Suddenly, Kendrick remembered himself as a 17-year-old. Have you been out again? Vigo asked Kendrick. He was a subordinate of his father, the Admiral. Kendrick wondered how Vigo had gotten wind of this. I've known you for six years now. 
and I can discern any change in your behavior during training. You have raised shoulders and pouty lips today, noted Vigo. I despise my duties as a young lord. Whatever event I attend, everyone stares at me like I'm a tidbit. They act as if I am their personal property. They're jealous of me, slandering each other and bragging, Kendrick complained. These people act like a gang of beasts, forcing their opinions and desires on me. And all I want is to be an admiral like my father. My mother won't even let me on the ship, says it's too dangerous. She still thinks I'm a child. Wouldn't you like to fulfill your dream and try it today? Today is the last day of my service. Consider this my parting gift to you. A sort of attempt to cheer you up, said Vigo. As of tomorrow, I will no longer be part of the fleet, so I will not be reprimanded by your father. So come to the harbor tonight. I'll escort you aboard. A short while later, Kendrick was kidnapped. Rosetta had to rescue him. Kendrick and Rosetta became good friends. They helped each other out a few times. Rosetta even risked herself a couple times to save Kendrick's life. One day, Owen told Kendrick that Rosetta and Nick are very close. It's like they are like brother and sister. They were both orphans who were taken in by Korgoth. Out of those two, Rosetta was the one who was supposed to be Korgoth's successor. Are the preparations going well? Asked the crown prince. Yes, kidnapping is not a difficult task for pirates. The only thing is we still haven't managed to find Rosetta. You took the bracelet, so I can assume that some progress has appeared, replied Nick. Someone whose soul has changed her body is unlikely to advertise that. I'm trying to find her, so you don't have to worry about that. Just focus on holding up your end of the bargain. Leave it to me to find her, said the crown prince. As soon as Rosetta stepped out of the carriage, a woman immediately rushed towards her. She grabbed Rosetta's hands tightly. Greetings, your ladyship. Leah, may I call you that? I've always dreamed of a daughter as lovely as you. Shall we have breakfast in the garden, or would you prefer to tour the mansion? The woman asked. Mom, you're embarrassing Leah, grumbled Kendrick. Kendrick, you still need to come with me to the residence. Your mother has been looking forward to this day. Please show understanding, said the admiral to his son. I'll be back as soon as I can, promised his spouse Kendrick. Despite my parents, please, don't do anything you don't like. How nice that you and I have the whole day ahead of us. Feel free to call me Ruiz, said Kendrick's mother, and grabbed her sister-in-law's hand tightly. Ruiz took her daughter-in-law from room to room. She really wanted to show every corner of her estate. Leah, I thank you for bringing our Kendrick back to us. When he was a child, he was open to the world and didn't hide anything from me. However, over the past few years, he has completely closed his heart. Ruiz complained. I began to feel as if he had become a piece of wood, incapable of feeling any emotion. But when he met you, he changed again. My son started smiling. When I see my child the way he used to be, I feel like I'm dreaming. You must be tired, so I'll show you your room. I tried to decorate it better. If there's anything you don't like, just say the word. When Rosetta crossed the threshold of her new room, she couldn't hold back an exclamation of surprise. The room was spacious, bright, and very cozy. I'm glad you like this room. Get some rest. I'll see you later, said Ruiz and closed the door tightly behind her. Poe heard footsteps. With slow steps, Kendrick walked into the room. Mom told me you liked this room. I'm glad you were pleased. Kendrick kissed the girl on the forehead. I am delighted, for this room reminds me of the captain's quarters on the Toulon. To say I like her is to say nothing, joyfully exclaimed the girl. Early in the morning, Rosetta changed into her maid's costume and left the mansion unnoticed. Anna followed her. We can pass through here. The servants only come here to take out the trash, so there shouldn't be anyone around. Anna pointed down a narrow path. A short while later, Rosetta and Anna made their way to a carriage hidden in a thicket of fruit trees. For two silver coins, the coachman brought the girls to the main square of the town. Anna, if it takes me more than two hours to get home, gather your men and head for the harbor. I'll try to make it there. Know that if it takes more than two hours, I may be in danger, said Rosetta to the maid. Under no circumstances do not you dare go to the naval office. Kendrick must not know about this. Trust me, everything will be fine. Rosetta had to wander around the city longer than she expected. The city had changed a lot in four years. Rosetta finally found what she had been looking for so long. Seeing a familiar sign, the girl smiled happily. Give alms. Even a single copper is enough, though a silver coin would be better. The red-haired tramp held out his hand to the girl. I left my money in the belly of the whale, replied the girl. Hearing the password, the tramp offered to come in. 
Rosetta tossed the tramp a single gold coin. Walking over to the bar, Rosetta ordered some rum. Rosetta asked the bartender where she could find Owen. The man pointed to one of the doors with his eyes. Just as the girl entered the room, someone suddenly grabbed her by the throat with their hand. Owen, it's me, prompted the girl. Lady Leah, what are you doing here? Owen exclaimed in surprise, unclasping his hands. My, what a welcome you have, Rosetta exclaimed. She put a hand to her throat, burning with pain. Well, how did you know about this place? I doubt Kendrick told you about it. Do you have your own ways of gathering information? Owen wondered. That's not the most important thing at the moment. I came to you not as an acquaintance of yours, but as a client. I have some issues to resolve. Answer me. Why did you leave my wedding so quickly? The girl asked. I have no friends or relatives left. There is only you. Why didn't you congratulate me on my celebration? To be honest, I'm still ashamed to look you in the eye because of that incident on the ship. It was my fault you fell down then, Owen admitted. It's even better for me if he thinks it was his fault. Now we have to make sure he doesn't accidentally drag Kendrick into it. I have to solve this problem myself, Rosetta thought. Yeah, I remember falling in the water too because you unclasped your hand. But it's okay, I'm safe and sound. I forgive you for that incident. With a sly smile, Rosetta said, Thank you, a flushed Owen exclaimed joyfully. But it's unlikely you came here to tell me that. Most likely you have some business to attend to. You told me yourself you came here as my client. I came to you to ask a favor. I need information on the pirate Rosetta, Kendrick's first love. I beg you to introduce me to her crew. The girl exclaimed, her eyes filled with tears. I want to meet them and talk about her. I am anxious to hear what they can tell me about that pirate. I know my husband loves me, but sometimes I feel like he's constantly trapped in her shadow. Help me, I promise no one will know about this. Rosetta made it to the carriage just in time. Seeing her mistress, Anna breathed a sigh of relief. Mistress, look, over there in the distance, isn't that the Lord's carriage? Looks like he decided to come home early today, Anna exclaimed. Rosetta ordered the horses to be driven. They had to get home before Kendrick arrived. If he found out that Rosetta had left the house without his knowledge, he would increase the security of the house. Then Rosetta wouldn't be able to realize all her plans.